Hey everybody, this is Leah Hampton coming to you live from the Blue Ridge Mountains. I am going to be reading for you today an excerpt from my story Parkway, which appears in the winter 2018 uh, issue of Ecotone, the body issue, which is appropriate because this is a story about a park ranger who is experiencing uh, the very real phenomenon that many park rangers experience of finding dead bodies in a national park. I remember every body I've found the same as I remember that girl. I remember mostly how soft they always look, especially the accidents, if you can see their faces. Sometimes if they've been dead a while, the bugs have got to them, or they've been cut by a windshield, or somebody slashed them up. Even then, it's little things that make me go tender, like the way a body's feet are laid out. A lot of people, when they die, turn their feet inward, just like a baby does when he's napping deep. Over the years, after what I found, I believe we all get warm before we go. We sink down into some warm place like we did in our cribs when we were little. Most bodies I found had special marks or little objects that surprised me. Five years ago, after, right after my youngest niece was born, I was on overnight south of Asheville, moving a fawn's body off the road where she'd been hit by a car. I had my headlights trained on myself while I picked up the fresh carcass. She was still warm, even in the December chill, her body a velvety sack of limbs. As I stood to carry her off, I noticed the hand-painted billboard for the quilting museum about 20 yards ahead. It came to me that I should look behind it. Bodies have beacons, I think. They want to get found. I laid the fawn in my truck bed, took off my gloves, and went to him. He was leaned up against the back of that old quilting museum sign, staring glassy into the forest. No more than twenty, small and delicate, dead only a few hours from what looked like an overdose. A thin line of drool sparkled like a glass needle from the corner of his mouth. He had this little purse, a bag he carried, and for whatever reason, he was still holding on to it when I found him. The bag had cats on it, made out of white sequins, with little black whisker threads sewn in lines around the faces. It looked homemade, with perfect, tight stitches. There was something about him hanging onto that purse I thought my heart might split. I squatted down, and how it was, was I talked to him. I wanted him to know he wasn't alone. I told him who I was, what I did, I talked about the fawn and how I'd come to be there. I told him how the grass looked around him in the dark, inky and cool. People think it's peaceful here, I said, but it's not. I put one hand in the grass to steady myself. Nobody should come up here if they can help it. But I could see him, I said. He was found. I rubbed my throat to slow my breath. I'm here, I said. I walked into the road and reached for the radio on my shoulder, stood in the middle of the blacktop and called Parkway Dispatch and the sheriff. Then I came back and sat down. Authorities will be along, I told him, and you'll be home soon with your family or whoever's waiting on you. I stared at the road. He looked into the forest. We both settled into the stillness. He was slumped sideways, one shoulder up higher than the other. His skin wasn't scary like it could have been. Every part of him, even his clothes, was soft purple in the moonlight, like lavender paper. State Bureau of Investigations never did figure out who he was. That's from my story Parkway in the body issue of Ecotone, winter 2018. And you can also read Parkway in my book, Fuckface, which is available from Henry Holt. came out July 2020, and uh, you can buy it anywhere, anywhere they sell books. Thank you. Hope you enjoy.